welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. This video is about our roof, um, but when we put our roof in, we were in a really big rush and didn't get as much footage as we should have, but we made up for it by filming the roofing of the utility box. In part two, we're going to focus on the gable flashings and the peak components. Okay, I'm going to put a piece of gable trim on our little box here and uh, we were in a big rush when we were putting the actual roof on, um, so we didn't take much footage of that, but I'm gonna do it exactly the same way and show you in detail all the steps that we took, uh, and this will be a good example because it's much easier to show down at this height. So I'm just gonna take this uh, the piece I'm gonna use here and hold it up just to test, test fit it. And I could see right away that uh, part of the way I've folded the uh, eave flashing is going to show, so I'm just going to take a second to pry that up and snip it off um, so that we don't have a weird extra piece showing under there. I made a couple of ugly scratches, but there's a bunch of spots where we're going to have to touch up anyway, so I'm not really worried about it right now. But uh, what I was aiming for was to make sure that this, this piece that I folded down is hidden, so it is. So I'm going to move, move ahead. Um, on the roof, it was a bit different. We basically lined the top up. Well, we cut the uh, the top at an angle so that it was um, perpendicular to the ground, uh, and that met up with the uh, the peak cap better. But uh, because of the piece that we're using here, which is like a wall transition, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to basically butt this up to the top, and you'll see how we're going to fold over the uh, the transition piece to, to cover that. So I'm just gonna butt it up as high as it goes and then make a mark basically right where the, um, the panel ends here. I'm gonna make a mark on the uh, this piece of flashing right there. All right, so I made the mark that lines up at the front of the panels. And the way that we're folding it is such that I want a piece of this section to fold over and basically uh, meet up with this line. So the, th the uh, width of this section is two and a half inches. So I'm gonna go from my mark, go two and a half inches out, make another mark, cut the whole thing, and then I'm gonna make little snips so that I can fold it. So the first step is gonna be to go two and a half inches and make a mark. And I'm gonna use a speed square to make sure that uh, when I make up my uh, guide for my cutting, uh, that it's square to the piece because I just cut these roughly to get uh, a piece to work with so they might not be square to uh, to the piece so I don't want to measure off there. Just using regular tin snips for this and just trying to make it as straight as I can. Because this is the sort of finished edge, you will see a bit of this. I'm just going to give it a super quick filing just to uh, clean up some of the, the roughness that the cutter's left. Okay, so now I've got exactly two and a half inches uh, more than the front of the panels. So the next step is I'm going to cut this portion out entirely. Okay, so I've cut that piece out. And now you can see if I slice this uh, corner and then snip uh, this piece, like I was saying, there'll just be a flat surface on here and here that can then be bent along this uh, line. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, and then normally I'd always fold things underneath and then have a thing fold over top so that the water shedding is always the smoothest on the top. But uh, because this is at the very end where the water's dripping down, it doesn't really matter if it gets anywhere. So I go for more of a finished look because when you look at it from the side, it's better to see a curve this way rather than some hard edge. So in this case, I'm gonna fold the top piece down first. So basically just gingerly until you can see the crease starting from the two points that you've cut. Like so, get that a bit out of the way, and then I'm going to fold from this point to this point. Here we go. 
and then I'll pull this back out a little bit. And there we go. And I was a little bit generous, so I've actually got a little bit extra along here. I might snip that off. But you can see how this is gonna go on here like that. And we're just gonna put a screw to basically hold these two flaps together. But the finish is gonna look something like that. All right, now to put this together and keep it square, I learned to use a clamp after not doing it on the uh, roof. And uh, it, was, it was tough, they would slide around when I was trying to screw it together. So I'm just gonna clamp this together. And then I'm gonna uh, pre-drill through both uh, the folds and then use what's called a stitch screw. Came with the roofing. Which looks like that and it's meant, it's, it's got a, a head, or sorry, a tip that is thinner than the threads and it's meant to basically stitch two pieces of metal together by the threads go through the first one and then grab the second one and pull them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one in and you'll see how it, it sucks them together. All right, I drilled through the two and uh, just cleaned it out, make sure there's no uh, filings in there. And then I'm just gonna ram Keep a lot of pressure on this to get it to keep the two pieces together. And there you go. And so you can see how the two pieces are uh, basically one now. And then just tweak this around a little bit until it's nice and square with each side and now you can see that when we line it right up to the front of the uh, panels we're gonna put screws in this way to keep this edge uh, perpendicular with the fascia and everything but uh, it's ready to uh, be put on now okay the piece is ready to go and I've held it up into position and made sure that it looks it's gonna be square with everything and then I've made a pencil mark on the panel and then we get to put on the most fun stuff, the butyl tape, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> which is the bane of your existence. <laughs> yes. So this stuff, um, it's just supposed to be a water resistant, uh, sort of gasket type material. I don't know why it's so thin though. And it comes on a roll where only one side is on paper because it gets I just had a horrible mess up on the roof but um, with this small strip of it it's it's much easier to work with all right I've got a couple foam pieces as well that are gonna close off the uh, the cavity once the piece goes on the uh, cable flashing but uh, I've just cleaned this off and I'm gonna lay this down pretty much where my pencil mark is Pull that off And so you can see where the piece is, you know, it's gonna go on and this edge, or this uh, little, yeah, edge of it is gonna go against this tape and make a seal. And it's not even really a big deal because if water did get past it, it would just hit this and then trickle down and go out. The only vulnerable spot, as you'll see, is when I put screws through that go through basically this edge uh, and through the tape. But as long as it's a seal, it's going to be all good. So I'm just checking that it will sit square when I put the screw in here. So I just hold it there. Make sure that, you know, it's perpendicular with the, uh, the fascia and that this line is per parallel with one of the ridge lines of the panels. And it's close enough. So that's good there. Now I'm just gonna put an actual fastening screw, which looks like that, in through the side into the wood. 
and I don't want um, the threads to bite into the metal and then pull the metal out. I want this thing to suck the metal down against the wood. So I'm gonna pre-drill through the metal so the only thing that the threads are engaging is the wood so that it will just suck it down with uh, the washer. Okay, so I'm gonna put the screw right into the wood. And it's a pretty big screw, so I did a little bit of a pilot hole so that it's not splitting anything in there. I'm just going really slow so I can watch the, uh, there's a soft gasket around the washer and you don't want to squish the hell out of it because that'll ruin the seal. So I'm just waiting until it snugs up. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty straight. Pretty much everything's where I want it to be. So that's good. And then I'm just going to put a couple of those same screws through this edge here. Uh, and then that'll be it for this piece. All right, I pre-drilled. I just need two here on the roof. We use three uh, spots, but um, it's such a short piece. I've just got the two. Uh, I've gone through all layers, uh, this E flashing and the panel, and then also a little bit into the wood with a smaller drill bit as a guide for the, uh, the fastener. And then I'm gonna just take off some more of the metal with a bigger drill bit so that like I was saying, the threads don't catch it. I just want the threads to pull the whole thing down and squeeze it all together. So this is the joy of the butyl tape. I caught some of it and now it's got wrapped around my drill bit. I got a bunch of metal filings into the butyl tape, so I'm just going to put some caulking on after the fact. And that's what we did up on the roof, was I was trying this for the first time and it, I, some of the butyl tape wasn't lining up right. And um, when I drilled, it didn't seem like it was staying to make a good seal. So I just went through and put a little bead of um, caulking along the edge to basically remake the seal that had uh, come apart. Same thing here, just just snug so that you know where the tape is good, it's making good contact. And uh, the washer on the fastener doesn't over squish. And I'll just put the other one in here. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty straight, looks pretty square. And in the back here, we're gonna be folding over the final transition piece over top of that. So that piece is done and that's pretty much, like I said, how we did it on the roof. Just a longer piece, obviously. I'm gonna finish off this section of roofing on the box. The final piece that goes on looks like this and it's to transition from the wall onto the, uh, the roofing because the siding will come down in front of this portion. But there's a big gap here, as you can see, created by the ridges. And we need to close that off both from uh, wind-driven rain and uh, insects. So there's a foam closure strip it looks like that. There's longer pieces, this is just a scrap. And it's got an indent there that will go over the ridges and close that off. Something funny that happened to us when we were ordering the roofing, because we'd never ordered it before, we were going through the list of uh, parts and things like the, the closure strips and the butyl tape and all the screws and everything, trying to make sure we we're picking the right stuff. And there was something called large vented closure and it seemed to be from the instructions that that would be the appropriate uh, closure stuff to put, put here where I'm describing. 
um, and we determined how much we needed and based on the size of the rolls that were available we needed just over one roll so we ordered two rolls and uh, later found out as the, the order was going through that those two rolls alone were $500 which was more than half of the entire order's value and we were just bewildered by why it was so much and we, we looked into it and it turns out that it is in fact that expensive and so we just axed that from the order and got um, basically the non-vented just regular solid foam stuff and uh, the idea with the vented closure is to allow airflow for things to dry and as you've seen from some of the techniques we've uh, been using we're trying to get uh, air gaps everywhere for uh, moisture to evaporate. So rather than just putting this down as is, I'm actually drilling tiny little holes and making our own vented closure. Um, just using a very small drill bit, small enough that I feel it'd be pretty difficult for an insect to crawl through. I mean, this is fairly thick, so it would have to go through a fair amount, through a small hole, and I'm just willing to take that risk to give it just a little bit of airflow, um, just going with the kind of better than nothing mentality here. The peak cap, which is this piece, which is what's used on the actual roof, is a lot like this transition piece I'm about to install. It's got a angled bit to match the slope of the roof, which produces the same kind of gap, and we use the same kind of closure with the same drilling technique I'm gonna show you here. Uh, the difference, of course, is that the backside drops down vertically with a kick out, which is ex exactly like the way the uh, gable flashing and the E flashing is. And the uh, difference in the installation up there is, of course, with this edge, we just screwed it down with those fasteners that screw right into the wood to hold that down just in a couple spots. But the top piece uh, and what I do with it is basically going to match exactly what, what goes on here. And of course, the way we cut and folded the ends is sort of similar to what we've got going on here. So I just grabbed a thin drill bit. Uh, it's an eighth inch, and I'm just gonna drill some random holes in these just to give it that little bit of a, uh, a path for air to flow through. it is and it's gonna get squished and the holes might close but it took two minutes so figured it was worthwhile this stuff comes with a peel away and it's got a sticky layer on it which is quite sticky and uh, I'm sliding it up as high as I can go on these panels because they're actually a little short but good enough so I'm just going up as high as I can make it as uh, hidden as possible. It's quite sticky. And then just cutting off around this uh, edge here. Okay, should be able to get the uh, piece down on top of that. So I measured from the end of one gable flashing to the other and then added six inches so I'd have three inches on each end to cut and fold. So the first thing I'm gonna do is slice the corner up three inches and fold this down. Then I'll go to the other end and make a mark uh, to cut it perfectly on that end to fold it down so that it fits nicely over the whole box. Something about this piece is that on the front, because this is the finished uh, edge, there's a fold. So there's two layers of metal here. So I'm gonna need to snip that before I can actually make the bend. There's one other thing about this piece that's a bit tricky, which is that because this is not uh, a 90 degree angle. When I make this bend, it's not going straight down, it's actually going towards the house. And that makes it so when I slide it up, 
this corner hits the wall before this piece, which is supposed to be flush with it. So I'm gonna have to cut what's straight down, but will be at an angle from, from the square of this. Okay, if I slide this up now, my fold matches this uh, seam when it's gonna be, when it's sucked down nice and tight, it'll match it pretty well. Uh, this is flush against the wall and we're good to go. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end, uh, making it wrap nicely around the full width of the roofing. And then I'll start securing it into place. Okay, I got the piece in place and it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna start by just tacking some roofing nails in to this portion to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna be using stitch screws to go through the bottom piece to hold it down to the panels. Okay, I'm gonna hold it down nice and tight and uh, flush to the wall as best I can. It's tending to pop up because the foam closure is slightly bigger than the gap there. So I'm gonna try to put some pressure down. Get some pressure in the corner to get it right where I want it. And get the first nail in here. And I know where my studs are actually. There's one in the middle, which I'm pretty sure I've hit there. And then there'll be one 16 inches on either side of that. So I'll go in there just to make sure that I'm uh, fastening into something solid. Okay, and before I go any further, just before things get wet here, I'm gonna put the same blue skin adhesive membrane that we used around the windows um, over top of this. So it'll be a, a barrier to protect from water getting in behind this portion. So if water sheds onto the top of that, uh, it'll then go down onto this and then find its way out. Uh, when you're watching this video, our window installation video may or may not be out yet, but in that video we do a lot of uh, flashing with this blue skin stuff, and you can see a lot more detail about uh, how it's used. And I'll, I'll throw a strip of contractor's tape along the top edge here, just as another layer for the water to have to, to work its way behind. All right, now I'm gonna fasten this portion of the roof down onto the panels. And uh, it's actually pretty secure as it is, but um, you know, if we do tow the trailer, wind forces are gonna come straight at this thing, and I don't want anything um, flapping around. I want the whole roof system to be really tight. So, um, What's gonna happen is I'm gonna drill through this piece and then through the ridge. And you can see uh, in the ridge, there's actually two layers because of the previous panel and then the one that interlocks over it. So when the screw goes through, if I were to just put, try to get the screw th through there, it's gonna bite the first layer, hit the uh, bottom out on the next layer and then push everything back and it's not gonna work. So I found that um, pre-drilling everything, all three layers, the, uh, the actual piece that's over top, and then both of these um, ridges works a lot better. And I start with a really thin uh, drill bit so that I'm not hitting this rounded ridge and then going off to the side. I wanna go straight through it uh, so that I can bite it with the st stitch screw after. When working on the actual peak cap up on the roof, uh, having to work from one end to the other the way that the piece is overlapped and not being particularly experienced with working with this type of uh, metal paneling, I ended up getting off to a little bit of a bad start which carried through all the way to the end because any pieces of metal that have an angle like this are very difficult to, well they basically don't want to flex uh, out of uh, a straight line. So if you've got something that's going out, uh, you're gonna have a really hard time uh, correcting it later on. So the whole uh, peak cap is, like I was mentioning, there's one edge that's supposed to be perpendicular with the ground and the other edge is, is like this that matches the uh, roof paneling. Uh, my first piece, uh, I had this portion a bit too far forward, which pulled the uh, edge that's supposed to be per perpendicular with the ground up a bit. So the whole way down, it's not ideal, but uh, it did work out in the end. But having uh, 
gain that experience, I'm gonna try uh, starting more close to the center with this, rather than starting on one end, uh, risking something being not perfect, and then having the, the, the metal uh, piece wanting to, to get further and further out as I work my way down. I'm gonna work from the center, then I can work this piece out and that part out, because it's kind of the ends that I want to have the most play with to, uh, to get that corner looking nice. I got my really small drill bit and I'm gonna hold this down and basically just try to get it, get it drilled right over top of the ridge. And this is folded over so I'm gonna go just a bit back from where that ends. Should, that should be about there. And this happened to me before, I have broken my drill bit. That was funny because I was just about to comment on how easy it is to break a drill bit doing this, having broken one uh, while working on the peak cap. And it's just because when you go through um, and you hit this rounded edge, it wants to slip, but you know, the drill bit's held tight up there. So being so thin, it's easy to snap it. Anyway, I was a little bit careless there. So I just got a bigger bit and I'm just gonna ream out what I did and finish it up. So anyway, you could see how I went through each layer there. So now I've got a, I know I've got a hole through each one that I can use as a guide and then I get a bigger bit. And uh, again, I didn't want to use a big bit to start with because I'd be all over the place. But now that I've got that hole started, I'm gonna get a bigger bit that's gonna allow the stitch screw to uh, get its thread started and tighten down nicely. And I'm gonna wanna clean out any filings from inside there before I tighten that down with the screw. All right, I picked a drill bit that would create a hole large enough for the self-tapping tip to pass through completely. And that's because, again, if I, if I tried to use this uh, self-tapping tip to get through the metal, um, it, would, uh, it would get through the first layer, maybe the, the second one, but then that last one, it's gonna bottom out against and it will have already bit in with the threads on the top layers and it's just gonna not, it's gonna push everything out of whack. So I've got this to a point where this will pass right through and I'm just gonna put a huge amount of pressure down to keep this down where I want it so that when the thread's engaged, they're engaging the right spot. I'm actually gonna get up here, just put all my weight on it. And there we go. So that's sealed with that uh, gasketed washer and it's biting in that is completely solid. This is now secured to the panel. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna do one on every ridge here. I did every second ridge on the P-cap because the piece was much longer. Um, but down here, uh, because I want everything as, as tight and for it to look a little bit better, I'm gonna put one in, in every um, ridge. I noticed my last shot was uh, a little bit out of focus, so I'm just gonna do another one here a little bit closer and a little bit sharper.
Okay, it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna finish this off and then I'll show you some uh, shots of it when it's done. All right, I got all the stitch screws in along the top there. And I just put one of those beefier wood type screws into the fascia board uh, through the two layers here, the exact same way I put uh, them into the gable flashings earlier. Hey Ben, what do you think? Do a good job? All right, so that's it. That's all of the roofing that we're going to be installing on the tiny house. Uh, we think it went pretty well considering we've never uh, installed any roofing before. And uh, I'm sure there's better ways to do all the folds and uh, the finishes out of things, but uh, we just prioritized water shedding and then just made a finish out of whatever we ended up with. And uh, I think we're pretty happy with uh, the integrity of um, what we've put together here. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles and subscribe if you want to follow our progress.